maybe we should say at the beginning of our episode hey don't write me off if from you this like one background episode. this is a background <laughs> origin story have a listen if not go ahead and skip to episode three human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be i'm dana the human design specialist and i'm Haley, the human design newbie listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success today we're diving into the beginning the origin story gotta love a good dun, origin dun, dun. story this has a good origin story hang on <laughs> it's an interesting one it's an interesting one and i find that a lot of times in human design uh circles or non-circles or just trying to get the word out there that a lot of people don't like to talk about the origins because it's weird <laughs> it, and... it does sound a little suspicious or sketchy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because well, of where it happened <laughs> well, that's quite that... a setup <laughs> <laughs> well, I will admit, like I told you in, in the last episode, that when I first uh, discovered it and saw the, the body graph and tried to read some of the stuff, I was like, hmm, okay, this is interesting. And then I went on, it, it might have been Jovian Archive, and there was all these recordings from um, Rob, who we'll talk about here in a minute, who was teaching, and I was like, this guy's crazy. And <laughs> I started to think is this a cult? And <laughs> so I, that's another reason I just remembered that, that I kind of put it down because I was like, I don't want him getting in my brain. I might be <laughs> getting This guy is a cult leader. I mean, he's crazy. And that's usually one people, one thing people can agree on is, is a little strange, but um, brilliant at the same time. So anyways, where would you like to start, my dear? <laughs> with the supernova the supernova okay cool all right because well, space mm -hmm. is mind-blowing mm -hmm. yes well okay so in 1987 there was uh basically which i had to look up what's the definition of a supernova but it's the death of a star apparently and there was That's what this... i was gonna say yeah <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay you get points <laughs> yes bonus round so um yeah so there was this supernova death of a star and so it sent all this um basically hmm let's talk about neutrinos first do you know what a neutrino is i know because i looked it up it's the matter between atoms like between the well, parts of an atom no, well sort of it's it's, it's basically smaller the than smallest atom. it's infinitesimally i don't think that's the right word infinitesimal infinitesimally small <laughs> it uh, is. matter and it's something that they used to think was just pure energy but they didn't think it had any mass infinitesimal mass Yes, Fantastic. very small. It's the smallest thing, smallest thing out there. And basically, they have uh, discovered neutrinos are the smallest things, let's call it, that have any kind of mass to them in our known universe. And they were just kind of theorized before about maybe they had mass, but they have since discovered, I think, since, uh, I don't know if it was before or after the supernova, I don't know. Anyways. It's basically the breath of stars is what they call neutrinos because they're made in stars. They come from stars. And one cool thing I learned about them in researching some of this is that they they travel in a straight line. They don't deviate. Forever. They just kind of like, yeah. And so the um, neutrinos basically can pass through everything all the time. Like right now on Earth for every second – on every square inch of earth including us there's like trillions three trillion three trillion neutrinos just passing through us all the time okay so we got neutrinos it's a bit rude <laughs> they carry information they, and they some theorize the ancients that you know not the ancients 
I'm not Asian scientists, but some scientists theorize or some people theorize that neutrinos are this in this, they carry this, the information, the vast information field that is our universe and that informs everything, which is like chi and prana. It's, it's the, the quantum in a way. So, so like what kind of information? Well, we'll get on like, that in a minute. I guess more information that we take in subconsciously. No, like literally they, so the death of a star that comes out and it just travels through space and it travels like through Mars or it travels through Venus and it travels through us. And it's like, I'll tell, I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Well, so now we can get back to the supernova. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now we have a background on, we have a notes. little background. So there was this big, this was the first, I think it was one of the first ones, uh, that it was visible to the human eye they were able to actually see it probably through a telescope i guess it was close it was, enough yeah it was in our universe it was way out on the edges but it was big enough that it was seen mm -hmm. and they say the <laughs> they the scientists they. that <laughs> basically for i think it was how long was it it was a good long it was a good long time that the um the earth and everybody on it received like three times 14 as, minutes mm -hmm, three times 14 as minutes. many that, <laughs> thank you <laughs> 14 minutes i read that note <laughs> three times as many neutrinos as normal and so it was not exactly at this time but it was around this time a little bit further on because I, I don't know the exact date on the the actual supernova that there is this guy alan your buddy, Alan Krakauer. Alan, you said his murder Alan name Robert was... Krakauer mm -hmm. from Montreal. Oh, he's Canadian, eh? He is Canadian. Yeah. He was living oh, in Ibiza. Oh, his birthday's coming. His birthday's coming up. Yeah, he was living in Ibiza, Spain. And, like, I don't know the guy personally. Obviously, he's, he's passed, but there's a lot of speculation on, and I think he's even said himself, he, you know, he... He may have been, you know, imbibing things. He was a at the time. he was a school teacher. What does that Ibiza. mean? <laughs> I don't know. Well, he's obviously, he was doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, he's a school teacher. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, anyway. a school teacher. Anyway, so he had he basically had this event that he uh, described as being um, penetrated by something he called the voice, and. It was an. It was really interesting. It was the first time I read it not that long ago about how he described what had happened. You know, it's like he just came home one night and his dog started barking and he didn't know what was going on. And suddenly he just like felt the presence of the voice. So this is why people don't like to talk too much about it. I think people are coming around more quote unquote woo things, which I hate the woo term, but basically had an eight day experience of the voice telling him that he need to write this shit down. <laughs> he, I, I read that he, uh, he said it wasn't very pleasant. It was an no, unpleasant he said voice. It was not a pleasant voice. It wasn't a pleasant experience. <laughs> and, and it, it didn't let him eat. Didn't let him eat. Didn't let him sleep. Like, man, eight I didn't days. Hear that, that part. sucks. That's what I read. Oh, I didn't know you did some reading. That's why I was a little bit late to this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should ask you questions. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> no, all okay. right. So, um, so basically, he was given this system, and he had no idea what it was. Like, he got all the information. It was very specific, and there will you'll find things in human design where there's just you know you can only question for so long. Well, why like the centers, like the colors of the centers on the body graph? Why are they certain colors? Nobody. He. That's just what the voice said, and. And there's, I would like to know. Well, you know, I've heard um, some people talk about it, say that knew him, that said that he said it was very specific colors and it was had to be drawn a very specific way and he had to keep redoing it and redoing it and redoing it until he got it right. But I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, the colors of the centers, because, you know, I feel like they should be like colors of the chakras, but we'll get into that too. So basically, they uh, he said that he spent the next year or so of his life just trying to get himself back together again after having this experience and then start kind of trying to assimilate this information. And um, 
And then he started teaching and sharing the system in 1992. So what did he receive? Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So basically the voice told him that, you know, we are, um, kind of all fragments of these two original crystals. He said that the, 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 what we understand as the beginning of the universe wasn't really the beginning of the, as we understand it. And that it wasn't like the big bang wasn't like the end of something. It was the beginning of like almost like creation conception. Like we, if you want to get really finite about it, he said that we are actually like a fetus in the womb, like our universe, everything we know is we're not fully developed. And the voice even called us, didn't call us humans, called us raves. He's, the voice said humans haven't been born yet, that we're just the building blocks. I know you don't like that. <laughs> no, because that sounds scary. That's that's why we'll, we'll just set that. We'll just place that little nugget right there. We'll put that one on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I do think it's kind of important to note because, uh, let's face it, I'm... I'm a researcher. I'm a line one. I want to know all the information and I know not everybody wants to know all the information, but there's quite possibly line ones out there that want to know. (laughs) And, um, I would say that he said that there was the, these, he just, the, the voice, I shouldn't say he, they, the voice said that there was the, the basic yen and yang, right? So the yen uh, was this, uh, he called them like crystals. He, I'm going to stop saying that. I'm going to say they, there was like a yen egg that contained all the mirror material of the universe. And inside this like egg was a crystal like structure. It's not really a crystal. It's just something our brains to understand. So there's this container of all material and mm-hmm. then the young seed, which also had the same crystal structure collided together. And this kind of goes along the same lines with how, um, the building blocks of science, you know, of the universe, according to science is that matter, there's matter and there's energy, right? And this Mm -hmm. is what this Mm -hmm. is matter and energy. So when these two collided, it created this huge, you know, explosion out into the universe. And so those original crystals, the yang and the yin fragmented into zillions of crystals, just forever expanding out in the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's important because in the human design system, um, we have this design side, which is the body and the personality side. So, and they refer to those as, as crystals and they reside in our body. So the voice says there's a little bit of this crystalline structure in all of us. We are all part of the same thing. So, there you go. I just like that. It, it makes sense to me, but I've been looking at it for a while. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> it's a, Cause I, I knew about the body and the personality side, but then to have it mm-hmm. then tie back into that is interesting to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So what's also interesting to note, and this has to do with the actual mechanics of the system and, and like what it's built upon uh, the voice made basically two predictions at the time that were contradictory. This was 1987 to what science had already known. And one of them was about the neutrinos that we were talking about. Um, so these neutrinos, you know, they pass through all matter all the time, come from the far reaches of the universe. And they can now, they recently, just like two months ago, they're hard to find. They're hard to kind of pinpoint but they have Mm -hmm. been found and they found one they have these huge underground laboratory type things Mm -hmm. that are there to try and track them and they recently found one that came from way beyond the outer edges of our universe like these scientists man (laughs) they're they're very patient people (laughs) oh yeah they wait a long time and they so much researching a lot of calculations let's give them a round of applause so so if you think about it these neutrinos if they're passing through us they are interacting with our dna now you asked about what information they bring Mm -hmm. correct yes 
So the analogy they like to give in human design is that imagine you have a, a white car and you have a black car and as they travel towards each other, maybe they slightly run into each other, they like sideswipe each other. You might get a little black on the white car. You might get a little white paint on the black car. Nothing's really changed, but it's like influence. There's a little bit of material, a little bit of information on each car now. They're, so they're a little different. So same thing as each neutrino passes through the universe, you know, and it interacts with any other matter, it's forever kind of got a little different flavor to it, a little imprint to it. And then if it passes through us, it informs our DNA. That's what, that's the whole basis huh. of everything. You're letting that simmer. Interesting. <laughs> the information bit is, um, I don't like uh, super abstracty things. Yeah, I know. And there is, you know, for me, it's about all I can do with this information because I'm not a scientist. And I'll just take it at that. I'm like, okay. But you know, I mean, people have been studying the effects of the planets on our, you know, here on earth. Um, and to, I think it's crazier to say that all the things out in the cosmos don't affect us than it is to say it does. I mean, I mean, the moon affects us here on Earth, the gravitational pull and all this other Let's stuff. Let's not get started on the moon. <laughs> Why? Because it well, confuses you're gonna... us. Yeah. <laughs> so in 1987, yes, in 1987, they did not mm -hmm. yet know that these uh, neutrinos had mass yet. And so um, we do now. So they, they were, they weren't a completely new concept, but they were very theoretical about having mass. Right, because, um, <clears throat> yeah, they thought they were pure energy, but science has since mm. confirmed that they have very, 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 very small amount of mass. And I think your brother's one that told me, is like, yeah, because they don't uh, travel faster than light. <laughs> it's like, well, there you go, Ian. Of course he Once knows again, that. <laughs> can totally have information about something that you really shouldn't, but you do. Yeah. But then, you know, sometimes he'll be, he'll say something with the same confidence and it's just a bold face lie. <laughs> There's that. There's that. <laughs> but that one, I, I feel like he actually knows. So if that little fact toy blew you away or got you irritated, this next <laughs> one's really gonna, really gonna grab you. Oh no. But we talk about it a lot in human design. And maybe we should put this episode like fourth or fifth so people get to be like, nah, I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> well, but, we're um, either going to suck them in or repel them. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Just hang in there. It. We're going to get to the point of why this is relevant and how it can actually help you. <laughs> but, um, anyways, this is just our contribution. So, the second prediction that the voice made was that um, not yet, and this is to right now, this is still true, has science uh, found the existence of something called a magnetic monopole. So I know you know about magnets, they're dipole, right? Mm -hmm. They all have, well, they are getting close. I just read an article the other day that, well, no, I didn't. I watched a YouTube video. <laughs> That had me for about, and this was a legitimate science channel. It wasn't some wacko science channel. This guy was so smart and used so many words I did not understand. <laughs> I just sat there and I was, first couple minutes, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get understand this. And then I was like, oh, like, nope. And it went nope. on for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and I thought there's people that understand this stuff. This is crazy. But anyway, so they are close to discovering a magnetic, magnetic monopoles and the voice says that they will discover that this is actually the source, the of, source gravity. of gravity. <laughs> Are you going to ruin my moments? <laughs> no, I wanted to be in on that one. <laughs> what do you think about that? So we don't know where gravity comes from. We just know Not it's really. there. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. They, yeah, they have theories. But it's one of those things that they don't, from what I understand, I was surprised here, they don't really know 
like they have theories but but then how know. can so, so we might get people we... commenting and saying you guys are stupid no so so they must know how gravity works because mm -hmm. we can calculate the gravity on other planets mm -hmm. we just don't know where it comes from mm -hmm. so then how do we know our calculations on other planets are correct that is something beyond my uh pay scale <laughs> i don't know i don't know i have no idea but um yeah that's i'm just gonna drop that there too <laughs> remember magnetic monopole only attracts does not repel that's a very important part in the human design too because they said you know we've got those crystals we've got the yen mm -hmm. crystal the yang mm -hmm. crystal that reside in the head center the ajna center and then it's all held together in the g center which we'll talk about later by a magnetic monopole this is what the voice says so most important thing here to understand is you don't need to really know any of this shit. <laughs> it is not going to change if human design is useful to you or not. It could be interesting to hear this, but it's not prerequisite to understand the origin story <laughs> for it to work for you. Right? Right. Because, mm -mm. but, uh, so there's that. So what have we covered? Wow, oh. we, we get a lot. Okay. So I, I was, I was, I wanted to know why he changed his name, and I couldn't oh. find that. I haven't because either. it's a very odd name, but according to this one thing I read, which it he means... changed it from Alan Krakar to Ra Uru Who. Yeah, Uru, Uru, yeah, Uru. That I mean, reminds me of Ra is a sun god. Uru reminds me of um, Finding Dory. When uh, Marlon <laughs> is trying to call the bird over, he goes, Uru, Uru. <laughs> there so, remember that. Well, I've, I think I've seen that movie a few more times than you have. So, so after he got the, after he heard from the voice, this says he, st after studying the old and modern wisdom teachers for two years, he changed his name and his new chosen name, the Ra Uru Hu apparently means the door closer really i thought that was kind of interesting that's what it the says door closer i've never heard that before this is according to a corro cor cor uh, what can you say that again Co cora cora i was trying to add too many q cora. oh a quora quora that one quora it's important i've never heard that before but you know that's really what it says. i thought if Ra it's true i found it kind of interesting yeah i wonder what dory's close is so let's get on to we know the origin so what did the voice deliver this human design system basically yes. is a synthesis of several other existing sy systems like and six five or six right five yeah it's uh okay so the most recognizable components astrology western mm -hmm. astrology um the chinese I Ching, the hindu brahmin chakra system and the uh, judaic uh, kabbalah and they all say quantum physics yeah well you know neutrinos so what's interesting is you know it's thrown out a lot this synthesis thing but it's not taking pieces and parts it's like taking each system because most of those sims well except for quantum physics have been around for a very very long time i mean these are things that i mean the I Ching alone is i think one of the oldest things out there not out there but i mean um a teaching one of the oldest texts i think is what i read yeah yeah and of course you know all the other ones are pretty old as well and they were it's, it's the oldest of the chinese classic texts the i ching yeah. and they're all like wisdom teachings they're like teachings on you know how to how to be how to interact you know dealing a lot with um your own personal system and your your energy and how you're here to express a lot of these things i mean the i ching from what i understand 
they're not really sure the actual origins origins of it it's so old and it's been interpreted and everything um and i know i knew nothing about the iching before um digging into human design same mm -hmm. for kabbalah tree of life is what it was tree of life um i really don't know anything about it still very much know the chakra system uh with my little background there and yoga and energy and all that stuff so that's probably why it resonated a bit to me but it'd be dabbled in a little astrology <laughs> I feel and like so, that's definitely the the one that people know the most. Like pretty much everyone, I feel like, knows what their mm -hmm. star sign, sun sign, sun, sun sign, sun sign. There's no, I mean, the sun is a star if we want to get technical. Technically, but what I was gonna say about the synthesis is a truth, true synthesis. Nothing is left out, and so. It contains these systems, and I like to think of it as they were, you know, almost like in a treasure hunt where you've got to gather the keys and put all the keys together or something like that in order to, like, get the, the final mystery piece to know, unlock the door kind of thing, or the treasure mm -hmm. chest. <laughs> treasure so chest. I see those as, like, I, the way I see them is because I guess probably it is kind of layered together on the human design mandala, these layers of these systems that created really a whole new system. So it's not like he just, you know, pigeonhole or picked or whatever the term is a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, it's just like, it's informed by all of these already existing systems. What's go ahead. So it's yeah. not like, so it's not like, oh, we'll take this from the chakras and this from, from I Ching and this from whatever. It's, he kind of took, he learned about the systems and then melded them? From what I understand, he didn't do any he of that. Or the it voice. was literally shown, to, from what I understand, it was shown to him that this is how it looks on a, a mandala. So basically when you look at the human design, because it is based on your time and your mm -hmm. place and date of birth. And that is because of the neutrino stream. Where were you on the earth? At what time exactly? What neutrinos basically pass through you? How are you influenced by the different planetary influences and everything else? What is your energetic DNA? What is what it, what because it informed your DNA as it passed through you. So it shows you really it's like the little, um, my knowing, my knowing circuit right now, 4323, it knows it and it's trying to bring language to it and it's having a hard time. <laughs> this happens a lot. Did you know the little, um, when they used to computers a long time mm -hmm. ago, used to have these like cards that had like punch holes, like all punched through them and you I put have it in. Seen that. Yes, I have seen those. That's how I imagine it. Like, that's how I imagine what your, um, your body graph mandala is like, this is your signature. This is what boom, boom like <laughs> was imprinted on your DNA at the moment of your birth. That's how I see it is. This is the information that was passed through to you. This is your unique signature energetic blueprint. And so and like, say you would put a blank card in the moment you were born, it punched it out and then pull out the card and that's your human yeah. design <laughs> yeah that's one way of looking at it <laughs> we want to get technical <laughs> <laughs> yeah but where was i mm. so so th when we were talking about the neutrinos they come from the stars we were talking about this imprinting thing they travel in straight lines they carry this mass they pass through and they interact with other things so the mandala shows us where the planets were and how they were informed to uniquely imprint upon you when you were born and so the very moment very place is is represented on this mandala so you'll see the common placements of the planets now there's also the layer of the I Ching. The I Ching is comprised of 64 hexagrams. 
And the easiest way to explain it, because I'm still learning so much about it, is like we said, it's an ancient oracle, but it's also a metaphor for life. It's archetypal patterns of the human experience. So we all have all 64 of these hexagrams, archetypes, whatever, because we're all human. It's which ones are going to be more consistent in us and which ones aren't. And that's what human design body graph mandala can show you. It's a map. Like we said, it's and a that, map. Is that defined by the planets? Mm -hmm. Yes. So wherever you're the plant, like say wherever Venus is, whatever I Ching or, or sun sign or whatever it's at will be more consistent and prominent in our lives. Yes. So if you look at the mandala, you'll see there's another outer wheel that has the 64 hexagrams that go all the way around the, the wheel. And within each hexagram in the Chinese I Ching, these hexagrams are made up of six lines. Okay. So it reminds me kind of like Morse code. Okay. <laughs> well, cause there's like, there, they, sometimes there's dashes mm -hmm. and then there's dots cause they're like six lines, but then they're all different combinations of short little lines, long lines, mm -hmm. full lines, broken lines. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they said that not they, I mean, some of the research I was doing, you know, that it's this Oracle of life, but it's also, it's also very mathematical, this, um, the hexagram structure, because they call the, each hexagram has an upper trigram and a lower trigram. And it's really just a matter of different lines. And it's so complicated. Like I can't even get into it right now, but <laughs> like, I can't even get into it right now. <laughs> I can't even, <laughs> but what's interesting and this stuff will just like this, it will literally scramble your brain. I mean, when you see all the patterns and, um, the fact that there's 64 hexagrams, there's like 64 codons in our DNA, you know, there's, there's a lot of correlations between the Chinese I Ching and the human genome system, which is really mind blowing. Yeah. Cause somebody even said that when they discovered our genetic code, it was also discovered to be the same math from the I Ching of 5,000 years ago. Dude. so what? let's see therefore this wheel the mandala of the the 64 hexagrams going around it mm -hmm. is like stringing out of our genetic code it's like a i wonder if the person that wherever the I Ching originated from mm -hmm. if it was a a voice that also came to them mm. maybe if they were all voices especially if there's maybe so where did these things come from? Whoa. <laughs> Especially if there's like 5,000 years later, mm -hmm. it's the same things, same math or whatever used to discover our genome, which 5,000 years ago, they had absolutely no idea that existed. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the same structure of like upper trigram, lower trigram. I think it's the same in these programming codons and our DNA have these upper structures and lower structures and it's there's like 64 of them and they all like correlate with different uh amino acids and all this shit that i don't understand but <laughs> i'm like well okay <laughs> so, so you, you can just say okay yep i say okay i'm like you say so i'm i'm gonna go with it because everything else is checked out so far in this system for me i've i've been looking at it for a while now i haven't found anything that's like no that's not right so so you have the outer wheel astrology, the, you know, um, which would be your sun signs and ha or the inner wheel. And then you have the outer wheel of all the hexagrams. And like I said, each hexagram has these six lines. So each hexagram on the wheel is broken into six lines as well. So basically there's going to be 384 lines around the human design mandala. Okay. So you would have like lines coming out like a, like pie lines. Yeah. It looks, it's like a middle. big spiral. It's a mandala, not spiral. That's not the right word. Like a wheel, pie. a wheel, a wheel. Pie. pie. <laughs> <laughs> wheel probably makes more sense. Cause there's a lot of, yeah. those would be really, really tiny pie pieces. I don't want, I don't want a piece of that pie. <laughs> <laughs> so Yes. Yeah, so we, so then on that inner wheel where all these little lines are, that's where we place, we can map out where the planets were 
right? Like you do in a normal astrology. So it's like, you can see there's these structures on top of each other that when they all come together, they show you, um, you know, pinpointing the info information down to the like very, very, uh, finite point of your structure, your energetic structure, basically. And then beyond, I mean, there is another, there's something that people call astro HD, where they really go into, uh, blending astrology and human design. But other than showing where the planets are on the mandala, it doesn't um, really use astrology beyond that. What are the numbers between the I Ching and the astrology? The numbers? Yes. What do you mean? There's a, a on this body graph. It's going to look fine. There's a, there's a circle of numbers in between the Pisces, the, the Pisces the astrology and the I Ching. I Ching. Oh, the numbers. Those are the, those are the numbers of the uh, hexagrams. Those are the 64th hexagram. Those are the I Ching numbers. Yeah, those are. So yeah, oh, you'll see the hexagrams, okay. but those numbers are. Okay. So when you look, I got it. When you're looking at the human design mandala. Then in the middle is the body graph. Those <laughs> numbers are the gates. We call them, which are hexagrams. The hexagrams are gates. So in the I Ching, they're called hexagrams. In human design, they are called gates. Okay. Ooh. Yes. It's already coming together. Yeah. So when you look at a body graph, and I should point out, this is a lot to take in, you know, listening, just listening to it, because it's a very visual component that I do have the free training uh -huh. on the on the website. There's always a link in the um, show notes, which has a visual component here of which is a lot easier for a lot of people to understand myself included mm -hmm. of um, where, what we're talking about here. But basically, um, yes, the, when you look at a body graph and you'll see all the shapes on the body graph, there's triangles, there's um, squares, they all have numbers in them. Those numbers are always going to be in the same place on the body graph. So like the head center, gate 63, gate 61, 64, always there. Okay. What it shows us is based on when you were born and where a planet sits within that wheel. If you see like in your case, the sun would show up in the little line that has a 63 on the end, I believe or 64. I don't remember which one's your son. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I look at a lot of autographs. Thanks. Um, and so, yeah, it's 63. Kate of doubts. <laughs> um, so that would be why on your body graph, if you were to look at it, where gate 63 is, it will have, it'll be um, what we call activated. It'll look like, it'll have a little circle number around it, which means that that gate was on, that gate was imprinted, that gate is activated in you. So if you, human design uses the, um, <clears throat> calculation from the time of birth and place of birth on the personality side, they call it. And then there's this other component of it, which is the design side, which is 88 mm -hmm. astrological degrees before you're born, which is basically 88 days before you're born. It's roughly three months. Yeah. So these two are layered together as well to create this body graph. So basically out of the 64 hexagram slash gates that are, there, there's going to be uh, 20, well, 26 uh, planet placements. Now, some planets, like the big planets, outer planets, could activate the same gate both when, you know, three months before you were born and mm -hmm. on the day, like Uranus or Pluto. You the know, slow moving. Very ones. slow moving planets. They could see a double activation. There. But anyways, we can get into more of that later on when we're going into like what the gates and channels are and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically what I will say about the 88 degrees before thing, cause people are like, why is it 88 degrees? And what if you're born premature? Blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sound callous. <laughs> Especially when you proceed it with what if you're born premature? 
<laughs> blah blah that blah. Sounded really harsh. I did not mean to be that way. <laughs> so <Hey>, whoops. <laughs> So I heard so it. So why eighty eight degrees? So I heard it explained not that long ago because I've been hearing different explanations of it for a long time, and a lot of times one of those things just kind of glossed over. And let me see if I can get this out of my head again correctly. So basically, the voice said that before you were born, the energy of the father pulls forth the design crystal which the design crystal is the vehicle, is the body, okay? Okay. And then um, this is somewhere around like eight hours before conception or something. It's very, very precise. <laughs> okay, voice. <laughs> but what I understood was that the design crystal is creating the body. It's building all the things. It's, you know, making your vehicle your vehicle. And then it's when the neocortex is fully formed is around that five, six month mark, right? When the neocortex is fully formed, that's when the personality crystal, the you that you think is you, right? From the moment you're born, mm -hmm. that's when it drops into the vehicle, into the body. So that the personality crystal has roughly three months to acclimate itself to its unborn form, to its vehicle, to its body. Because they also say in science that that is when, um, you know, brain function starts and all this stuff, mm -hmm. I believe. So the, the, which one is the one that is put in stone when, on, when you're born? Personality side. Which side? Personality. The personality side is the side that is the you that you think is, is you. It's what you most I, I identify with. It's if you're looking at the body graph, it's going to be on the right hand side of the body graph, usually in, in black numbers and the design side, the vehicle side, the body is on the left and it's the red numbers. And the body is the one that is 88 degrees before. Yes. Before birth. But I just thought it was cool to hear it. And that's, I only heard that explained recently that, you know, the design crystal drops, you know, is called forth, starts creating the vehicle, starts creating the body. It has all this other information with it. They, you know, and then, then the personality crystal drops in to help you kind of get, you know, used to your new, your new vehicle. <laughs> so hmm. that's, that's it. So. Is there any, so why, why do we, why do we need to know all this stuff? Right? Like, why? What is the Tell purpose? Tell me why. Well, what is interesting is that, you know, we talked about, you know, this is just information to have, you know, listen to it once. Don't worry about it again. You don't need to know any of it in order for human design to be beneficial to you. Because basically when it, when it, when you see your body graph, it almost starts to work on you at a subconscious level anyhow, because your, um, your consciousness starts to recognize what is you and what's not you. And a lot of people are not happy. A lot of people have lived very unhappy lives, not just now for a long time, because I mean, generations pass because they never really understood who they really are. And what human design can show you is really the energy you bring into this world, what you are, what is consistent, reliable energy in you and what you bring to the table basically. And that the more you can explore and lean into that, you just, you find that you don't have to change anything about yourself. Yourself is perfect. You just have to start peeling away the things that aren't you. So it's a, it's a map. It's, it's almost like a, a logical way of seeing ourselves that you can look at something and say, okay, this is me. We are talking about conditioning. Now as babies, we're one of those few species here on earth that are born completely, completely helpless. Like we, we can't do anything. Yeah. We would die instantly, not well, instantly, yes. but pretty quickly because we a few hours can't feed ourselves. We can't drink. We can't move. We can do nothing. Our brains aren't even formed either, you know, and fully formed. Yeah. Fully formed. And so we rely on the people in our environment to survive. Mm -hmm. 
And that is built into the human experience. That isn't something that just started happening. This has been since the beginning of time. So mm -hmm. what happens is um, you learn all the people around you, not just family, other people, you learn their experience of the world. You learn their beliefs about the world and you live your life according to what they know. And this is something that totally changed me in my life when I first learned this concept in uh, yoga is that whose life are you living? <laughs> if you like, don't ever question what you think, what you know, and it, it's, it's quite enlightening. <laughs> so basically human design shows you, look, this is how you came in. This may not be what you think about yourself now. You may not believe it, but this is you. And I have found over and over and over and over again for myself, for other people that I've done readings for friends I've talked to 100% resonate with what the body graph shows them about themselves. Nobody is ever completely like that is so not me. Kind of like how when you say, Oh, you're a Scorpio, you must be deep and mysterious and brooding. And I'm like, No, I'm not. I don't think so. Am I? <laughs> no. Like, Oh, you're vengeful and you're dark and you're scary. I'm like, No, I could have been at one point, but no, <laughs> you know, it's maybe in high school. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not what you're seeing is not subjective. There's no test to take or anything like that. It is like literally here you are. And then it shows you how you're designed to energetically interact with others in the world, how you are designed to make decisions that are aligned for yourself. And it's very simple stuff. We keep talking about complexities and there's so much information, but the basics of what you need to know to help you start living more um, aligned and hopefully happier is the basic parts, which is mm -hmm. what's your energy type, what's your authority, which is how are you meant to make decisions? And that's all you need to know. And that's what we're going to keep diving into. So I think we've got a long time today. So <laughs> any other questions? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Well, I think the next time what we should do next is talk about the types, the human design or types and get into the, the fun part of it. And well, <laughs> this was fun, but this is just like, no, we're just going to talk a lot more about Robert Allen. Yeah. Some people just this Allen Robert. People don't like background history. Some people do. So you know what? Hopefully maybe we should say at the beginning of our episode, <laughs> Hey, don't write me off if from this like one background. episode. This is a background <laughs> origin story. Have a listen. If not, go ahead and skip to episode three. <laughs> Just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think that's it for today. We'll just wrap it up there and, you know, yes. keep going. So I'm excited to get into the types. Oh, yeah. The types. That's technically the, types. like the manifestor and the, those types. Those are types. Yep. The human design yes. energy types. That's it. So there you have it. There's your background. Now we can move on. So we'll see you in the next episode. How's that sound, Haley? Let's talk about types. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>well you made it all the way to the end of today's episode so you must have liked what you heard if you did make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and perhaps leave us a good review and if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us make sure you share this podcast with them we'd really appreciate it catch you in the next episode